Hi, my name is Ian Scott. I'm Director of Internal Medicine and Clinical Epidemiology at Princess Harry Andrew Hospital. And today I'd like to talk about how we can get the consumer voice better heard in reducing low value care. We know that low value care is a problem. It's estimated 60% of current health care is effective, 30% ineffective and wasteful, 10% actually causes patient harm as a result of overdiagnosis and overuse of tests, medications and procedures. Up to date, a lot of strategies for reducing low value care have primarily targeted clinicians with education programs, audit and feedback, computerized decision support. And while these are useful uh, techniques, uh, in some cases they have uh, led to fairly small improvements in recommendation concordant care. So we have to ask ourselves, so what's the role of the consumer in this? And we know that many uh, patients and consumers don't really envision any benefit from avoiding low value care. In fact, the more care, the better from their perspective. Clinicians also often cite patient demand as a barrier to reducing low value care. Patients themselves may not feel comfortable talking about and participating in discussions around avoiding types of care, often due to power and information asymmetry. And often there's also absence of good data on how to communicate information about high versus low value care to patients. So we thought we should have a look at the literature on this to try to identify studies of consumer mediated interventions that reduce low value care. And we searched from between 2000 and 2020 of PubMed and Google, Swap, Google Scholar. So what did we find? Well, fortunately, um, Emma Sipes and her colleagues had done a lot of the work that we didn't need to do. They did a systematic review of 22 studies uh, published late last year of nine randomized controlled trials and 13 quasi-experimental trials, looking at things such as patient-oriented educational materials, shared decision-making strategies, and media campaigns. And the good news was that in 86% of these studies, there was a significant decrease in use of targeted low-value care. So in the case of low value medications, principally antibiotics and benzodiazepines, a 15 to 25% decrease in absolute terms. Low value procedures such as caesarean sections, labor inductions, knee and hip uh, surgery and non-beneficial life sustaining treatments in ICU, relative reductions of 20 to 80%. Low value diagnostic tests such as CT scans for mild head injury in children, cardiac stress testing in adults at low risk and screening tests such as full blood counts and ECGs. They also reduced by 8 to 41 percent, depending on the test. They found that interventions that really supported patients to engage proactively within the patient clinician interaction could lead to decreases of between 26 to 39 percent in low value care. And they also found that those studies that looked at shared decision making tools specifically, rather than just patient oriented educational materials, seemed to also have greater effect. So, what may predict greater use of shared decision making given that these studies would suggest that it is beneficial in avoiding low value care? Certainly where decisions are serious, involve serious matters, patients are more likely to engage and that goes to invasive treatments or procedures. Anything that involves significant out of pocket expenses or work absenteeism or interruptions to social activities. Younger patients tend to be more proactive as are women, as are those with higher educational and socioeconomic status and with higher health literacy. Importantly, patients who have long-term trusting relationships with their clinicians are also more likely to avoid low value care, particularly if the practice messaging within that environment is positive and reinforces that this practice, this group takes low value care seriously. There are a number of knowledge tools such as guidelines and decision aids, for example, that can also assist, but importantly, we need skills in effective communication and eliciting preferences and communicating risks looking at measures that to ensure that we actually do this. And there are now validated questionnaires and other measurement tools that look to what extent shared decision making actually occurs in clinical environments. A team approach, making sure that everyone involved in the team, not just the doctor, but allied health professionals and nurses have the same message. And that there's organizational support as well for implementing decision support systems. And again, public messaging, all designed to reinforce to our patients that they are legitimately able to ask these five basic choosing wisely questions. So I think we need to empower our consumers, let us hear their voice. Thank you very much.